So Kavita, you guys have been reopened here now at the George Observatory for a few months now since March. Yes. How are things going? Oh my gosh, amazing. The response has been phenomenal. We've had crowds come out here every night. We've been sold out every Saturday night. Every that Saturday night. That we're doing stargazing. And um, the really cool part, and I've said this before, is we're seeing people who like used to come out here when they were kids. Oh, wow. And now they're bringing their own kids out here. You know, so the response has been great. Unanimously, we hear people thanking us for being open again and giving them the chance to stargaze again. We were talking to the, to the to the park rangers and they were saying that they've been extra busy because of COVID. More people are going outside. They're wanting to hike. They're wanting, you know, you can socially distance out here. Right. It's pretty easy. Yes. Are you hearing a lot of that too? Yeah, absolutely. I think the fact that it is outdoors um, really helps and we can fit a lot of people out on, on the deck. I will say though, we are still controlling for capacity. So we, uh, we started a time ticketed system and you do have to purchase your ticket in advance and we're going to continue with that for a to, little to bit. To come up on the yeah, deck. To come yeah, up on the yeah. deck. So this is the big daddy right here. Yes! All right. We're so, so proud of it. You, can, you can't literally go in there and see through the eyepiece right now right but now. you can definitely there's a re, we have a remote viewing section where you can yeah. see what that thing is seeing. Right. And what we've done we've uh, invested in all of this technology. We have cameras that are attached to the telescopes that then run to a monitor that we have outside so you can stand you can distance you can see what's what the uh, telescope's looking at and there's somebody there who's explaining it to you um but th really the fun for most people has been to see these images on these monitors and have the volunteers explain to them what they're looking at we've had like the horsehead nebula the orion nebula just um or even just looking at the moon honestly that's something that's, close like it's the moon just so cool yeah. you know obviously um, uh, we're not looking at the sun are we we are not looking at the sun we do however no. have a solar feed that goes into our exhibit area <laughs> and you can look at it on a screen there but we please go. do not look directly I, at the I sun i want to look at it really bad it's just like right <laughs> no, there but it's not Craig, don't yeah. do it you know there are days where it is pouring down and obviously on those days we we can't um set up um so i always like to remind people Go to our website. Check Facebook. Check, check the website. Facebook, yeah. Check the uh, website. There will always be an update there. If something does have to be rescheduled, we'll contact you. We'll reach out to you. So um, don't be afraid to buy your tickets because, yeah. you know, you'll have a great time. One of my favorite things about, you know, the George Observatory, obviously, other than being able to see the Horsehead Nebula, is the fact that it's inside Brazos Bend State Park. Right. Which is just already a beautiful park anyway. We're already utilizing it. The museum is sort of like as an outdoor classroom. Right. It's just a beautiful yeah. place to go to get away from everything. Yeah. We've always collaborated with the park. And now that we have launched a new nature program that's based out of the Sugarland campus, but we're also doing stuff out here because hello, this yeah. is just the perfect place for it. But Aaron Mills, who is our director of nature programming, is going to be out here and I think doing a butterfly survey. Yeah. Which, how cool is that? What's cool about it is there's so many different there's the plains, there's wetlands, there's yes. forest here. Yes. So, you know, if you come out here during the day on a Saturday and you intend to stay for the observatory, you can pretty much see every single part. And how crazy is it that out of an incredibly urban environment like Houston, you drive 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and and this is what you see? I <laughs> yeah. mean, it's just, it's, we're lucky. We're lucky to have, we really you know, are. access to this. Yeah. All right, Tracy's going to show us inside the Big Dome. So welcome to the Guy Mard Research Telescope. 36 inch telescope we originally purchased from Louisiana State University. So this is the big daddy here. This is the thing that, that reaches out into the heavens and yes. brings back photos for us. This is what the people come to see. Wow. We can see anywhere from our closest star to galaxies far, far away. Now, what are some of the, 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 the bodies that we have observed with this piece here? We have looked at anything from our closest star, four light years away, to galaxies millions of light years away. So we can pretty much see anything with this telescope. What have you seen that has just, just blown your mind? I think actually looking at Saturn, when I could actually see modeling on the actual planet itself, structure on the planet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And definitely see the rings. You can definitely see the rings, the division between the rings. 
but then you can also see surface features on the actual planet itself. And you're, you're looking at something that's just so far away. Oh yeah. From our little planet here. Yeah, it's just a little small circle in the universe. All right, so this looks really dangerous and really scary, like some sort of time machine. I'm afraid to stand too close to it. What is it? It's not. It tells us where the scope is pointing up in the sky. Everything up in the sky has a right ascension in declination, just like longitude and latitude on a globe. So as we move the scope, the dials move. So what's your history here at the observatory? I mean, were you just here when we built it or what, what happened? Well, I was actually part of an astronomy club, Fort Bend Astronomy Club. We used to meet out at the Nature Center and then they had talked about, there might possibly be an observatory going in over here. Um, at that point, we didn't know where, we just knew possibly in Brazos Bend State Park. And then we found out the location. We just slowly started watching it as it was being built. I mean, I started it as, vo as a volunteer. Yeah, and then you've been here now how many years? I've been here since 1995. Wow, and you've been showing people I've been showing people the heavens since then. <laughs> yes. You should have that on your business card. Yeah. <laughs> showing you the heavens since 1995. But you've been looking upward for a long time. I've been looking up uh, upward since I was about six years old. So now you're even showing kids that were your age back then. Oh, yeah. Stuff that's well, up there. Kids, adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the difference between a kid and adult when you're showing them something up in the sky? Probably not much, right? Not much. There's I mean, still that wow factor. There is. Right? They get up to the eyepiece or when they're looking at the image out on on the screen, they're still amazed mm -hmm. that we can see stuff that far away. 